Large language models and image generation keep on colliding, and this time their pairing almost works. As you can see here, Almost provides large language models that will write codes to compose images with Almost's virtual canvas agent. Basically, you say some stuff, it does some things, and hopefully magic comes out. You can install it locally if you've got an NVIDIA card with at least 8GB of VRAM, or you can use the official Hugging Face space. Nothing explains better what's going on here than to actually show it in action, so let's dive right in. As this is hot off the presses, it's got its own Gradio app at the moment. I'm sure we'll see something work its way into either Comfy UI or some other interface at some point in the future. Over on the left, you can see all the settings. I suggest leaving everything at the default to start with. You can see you've got all the typical stuff in there for stable diffusion, though, of course, now at the top, we've got some large language model settings too. So ignore all that to start with, as all you really need to get going is just to submit your prompt. So there's my prompt going in at the bottom there. The prompt is the best rodent, very British. As you can see, it started doing a whole bunch of stuff, but rather than generating an image, it's generating some code to describe that image. Like it mentioned on the GitHub page, it's generating a canvas and a description for each area of that canvas. We can see a global description at the top, which gives a general overview. Here, it's begun to describe the scene more. We've also got some other sections below. So there, location in the center area, a medium sized square canvas. And we've got all these actual detailed descriptions in there too. So we'll give that a few minutes just to finish and then we'll carry on. Here's the complete thing then. So we've got the global description at the top. We've got in the center, on the left, on the right, on the top. So it's got all these different areas and for each area, it's got a description. Okay, that's all pretty good. So now we've got the description, we've got the code generated. You can go over to the settings on the left, click render the image and you will of course get an image generated by all that code. And there he is. So if we open that up in a new tab, just so we can get a better look at the image, there is the rodent. So that's just from a simple prompt as all I had was the best rodent, very British. So it's taken lots of different stereotypes and put them in there. So we've got a stereotypical British house there. He's got a little hat on, all this British stuff it's put in there as well. Pretty cool, huh? Just to really bring home all the extras it's brought in, here is an example of what was generated using the same prompt, but via a typical SDXL workflow. Quite the difference, isn't it? Okay, so now that you're rendering, you can also start playing with any of those settings for the image, such as the random seed. Let's pop that up and you can click render. And this time it doesn't have to generate the code again. It's already got that, so it's a little bit quicker. Now we've got our new image. This time he's got an umbrella as well, because yes, it does rain quite a lot in England. All right, so you like that image, it's really good. You can do the high res fix there. We're gonna do, uh, let's go well, 1.4, why not? So this time it'll do exactly the same image because I haven't changed the seed, but it will do it in a higher resolution. Okay, there he is, so let's open that first one, open the second one. So there's the first one, the low res image, and the second image is 1280 by 1600, so a little bit higher resolution. Okay, so with the basics completed, what else can we do? Can we hack that code, for example? Well, unfortunately not directly, but with it being a large language model, we can instead tell it what we want to do. For example, we could say something like this. We'll pop that in, change the rodent into an evil kitten. Now this time I will of course have to regenerate the code. I can't just click to make a new image, so let's wait for this to generate. Okay, let's render that new image. Obviously turning anything into a kitten isn't recommended, but one must sometimes make sacrifices for the advancement of science. Anyway, let's see what it's come out with here. So there you go, there's the kitten. Let's just open him up in a new tab. There you go, that's done pretty well, hasn't it? Changed the rodent into a kitten. Wait, that means you can do silly things, doesn't it? Why, yes, yes, it does. You can talk to it in order to generate or edit images, and the interface is more akin to chatting with an LLM. As such, it will take things in context as you progress. So if you want to start afresh like I am here, there's a new chat button up the top. 
But how silly can you get? Does this help with any prompt understanding? Time to find out. So this time I'm asking for a blue rodent wearing a purple hat who is sitting on top of a large yellow wooden box on a green table in the living room of an old Gothic mansion. In the background is a very dirty mirror and the wallpaper has a red flower pattern on it. Writing on the box says no cats in clear black letters. So that's absolutely loads of stuff. Will it get any of it right? OK, that's not too bad. We'll open him up so we can see the full thing there. So it's done quite well. We've got a blue rodent. It's got the purple hat. It's got the mirror. He's standing on the box and the box says no cats on it. The only problem is that those flowers aren't red, but still that has done very well indeed. I guess that means it should be able to handle basic stuff really well. Let's just do another new chat and we'll handle left and right. So this time I'm asking for a photo of some graffiti style spray paint art on a wall, which depicts a stereotypical man on the left and a caricature of a woman on the right. OK, so there's the image. It looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, so we've got the guy on the left and the woman on the right. OK, does it know it's left from right? Can it swap them around? Let's find out. So this time I'm asking, make the man and the woman switch positions. OK, yes, and they have indeed switched positions. Now we've got the woman on the left and the man on the right. All right, that's done pretty well. Talking of positions and things, back on the GitHub page, there's a bunch of other info you may be interested as well. Remember those values for locations and areas that got generated? Well, here they are listed and described. We scroll down a bit, got some pretty pictures there. It shows the three by three grid for the canvas, which can be further divided into a nine by nine grid. There are some fixed area types too. And just underneath, it says this method allows for 720 nine different bounding boxes covering almost all possible locations of an object in an image. They also have super simple install instructions, nothing out of the ordinary here, just a bog standard download, create environment and install requirements. All the models will download automatically the first time you start up the Gradio app too, so you're up and running in moments. If you've not got Anaconda installed already, then do check the links in the video description. And of course, the last line there just starts up the Gradio app. Now, there are a couple of issues you may come across as well. The first one I found was that by default, it leaked more memory than a broken rusty sieve. So I was over 32 gig of RAM used after just two or three generations. Luckily, this can be fixed by enabling the high VRAM mode, though of course you'll need to have at least 18 gig of VRAM to do that. So in libomost, there's this memory management.py file, Edit that in your favorite text editor and make sure to set high VRAM equal true. The other thing I had to change as well after setting high VRAM to true were these two memory management lines there, one on 67 and one on 87 where it unloads the models. So I just commented those out and everything seemed to work great. Then I was only using six gig of RAM and 18 gig of VRAM. Another problem is that sometimes the canvas code here may not generate properly. You can see it occasionally gets into loops and will just, you know, where it does the same word over and over again. So it might get stuck on artistic, creative, artistic, creative or something like that, in which case you just have to stop and try again. Also, if you want to change the SDXL model, you're going to need to edit the back end as there's no option there to change it. So there in the Gradio app, you can see on line 38 at the moment, the SDXL name. You've also got the LLMs there if you want to use a different one, but that is the best one to use. Other than that, it's certainly a lot of fun. Even just reading the code it generates may give you ideas for prompts or perhaps inspiration for a comfy UI workflow. And if you like AI stuff, maybe you'll like this next video too. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.